Well, welcome back to Media Week. Well, Prime Minister Tony Abbott is hosting another meeting with commercial television bosses to discuss media reform. But that is not all that's on the agenda. For more, we're joined by our co-host James Manning, editor and publisher of Media Week. James, so what is on the agenda if it's not just media reform? Well, there'll be media reform. We think they're going to be talking about SBS and licence fees. SBS right. we've talked about on the show before. There's a proposal to let SBS move some of its off-peak advertising minutes into prime time, which they can better monetise to make up for a funding shortfall they've, they're, they're getting for a uh, lower funding from the government mm -hmm. and the licence fees has always been a bit of a bugbear. They uh, free to win networks think they pay way too much for their for their licences here so they want to either scrap them completely or get a nice big rebate. The meeting's happening on Thursday this week so hopefully there'll be a nice photo opportunity with the, uh, with <laughs> with the Prime Chiefs Minister and, and the uh, TV chiefs. Yeah for sure but Malcolm Turnbull's not at the meeting. Apparently he's not going to be there no this is you know he's perhaps thinks he's gone as far as he can with this, um, with these laws and he's just got nowhere, there's been no consensus between the media groups, but he has turned up on a magazine cover, he's on the cover <laughs> of GQ, it's the power issue, oh, he's got a very look colourful, at the, uh, colourful headline tie, there. I don't think I'd get away with that on, uh, on the set here. Oh, James, you could get away with that. You'd make me change Look, look at the headline. Primed Minister. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's out on Monday and it should be a good read. OK, interesting. Now, look, speaking of commercial networks, Seven um, is back in the entertainment awards business as well. This week they've announced a joint venture with the Actor Awards to, to film the Actor Awards. Yeah, look, the Actor Awards were... Uh, a happened in January. Fairly low-key, off the radar, little... You know, they, they did all right. They've struggled financially for a few years. Seven's decided to come on board. They're moving the awards forward to early yep. December. Seven's going to be involved in the production. And if you like, taking on the Logies a little bit, because the Logies has always been a very nine-network function, even though mm. it's a, there's awards there for all broadcasters, and Foxdale usually does quite well too. But this is going to be interesting. It's been a long time since Seven's been in the award, awards business. Back in the 90s, they had something called the People's Choice, which went up against the Logies. <laughs> that lasted for a few years. So it's good to have an alternative, I guess, back on the scene. All right, I want to move on to radio. It's been obviously in the headlines this week. Big changes um, at four of the six radio stations that Fairfax Radio is taking into the newly merged um, company. What, what are we hearing? What are the changes? Yeah, look, changes all across the place. Uh, 4BC, a lot of the team there. T only two announcers really kept their daytime slots. Then there was confirmation that Alan Jones and Ray Hadley will both be networked into uh, Brisbane. Also, Ross Greenwood in uh, evenings. Ross has already been through regional Queensland with his show, but not into Brisbane. It'll be interesting to see how it goes. The mm. sort of Macquarie tried that with the 3MTR experiment in Melbourne a few years ago and there was you know, people in other cities don't really take kindly to shows being networked in, particularly a breakfast show. So, But then, you know, if anybody's up to the challenge, it'll be Ray Adley and yeah. Alan Jones. Well, they love to get some ratings on the board in those markets. Um, 2UE, there was one major change. Well, we talked about the newsroom getting closed yeah. down last week, so that was a big change there. But then Angela Caterns is one of the daytime hosts that lost her slot. They've got around that by getting the guys on air before and after her, Justin Smith and uh, Stuart Bocking, to extend their programs. Right. So there was no new announcer there. Then at... Uh, Magic 1278, the Fairfax Radio music station in Melbourne, virtually the whole uh, on-air staff lost their roles. Mm -hmm. We're yet to find out exactly what's going to be happening down there, but I wouldn't be surprised to see some networked music offering for those Fairfax yeah. Radio music stations. Yeah, right, OK. Um, also, I want to move on to online news rankings, because Nielsen's out with a new one, and there's been a small change, a bit of movement for yeah, some of them. Yeah, look, still uh, news.com and smh.com.au finding out the top spot. News has a narrow lead. Yep. The uh, Daily Mail's dropped a spot. Peter Holder's... Peter Holder was in here last yeah, week, told yeah. us he didn't want to be number four forever. Well, he's not. He's number <laughs> five now. Oh, so I don't we, feel like that. He's got to climb a little bit, fight a bit harder to get back to number one. And uh, BBC.com slipped back inside the top ten. Oh, OK. Um, plus, it's been a big month for real estate as well. Still kicking goals. Yeah, look, those uh, real estate websites, uh, realestate.com.au and uh, Domain, both been doing well. I think they had record months, virtually. The traffic, we've all heard about the real estate market, the number yeah, of options Not much of a everything. surprise, probably, there. No, absolutely. And, and March data also revealed a big uh, month for ESPN, right, the, those online properties? Yeah, uh, ESPN Crick Info. We had right. someone from ESPN here earlier this year talking about their online mm. properties and what a growth area it is them. And there, look, this was a massive tournament for ESPN. They set up here in Sydney. They had a studio at the bottom of uh, Mr Macquarie's chair there. They were doing daily shows as well as covering all the uh, games. They had the rights for some countries around the world as well. And, mm. yeah, record traffic for them in March. Just quickly, we talk about Netflix almost every episode these days, but Netflix is out with more numbers now and subscribers are, are growing. Yeah, look, uh, close to 5 million new subscribers in the month right. around the world. About half of them in the US, half of them outside the US. This is a, as they expand globally. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, big, big numbers for them. They, they continue to do very well. 
All right, let's take a look now uh, at some of the TV ratings for Week 15. Kicking it off with free-to-air ratings. There's the top five. My Kitchen Rules, of course, still uh, taking the top three spots there. Yeah, look, absolutely. The numbers have been dropping a little bit for My Kitchen Rules, but it's such a big juggernaut that it's still easily winning uh, yeah. ranking number one at night. Let's round out the top ten now and take a look at the rest of them. Uh, there they are. The Block makes it in there. Uh, seven News. Yeah, but it's all over news or big reality franchises, isn't it, to get into that top ten spot. Yeah, for sure. All right, let's um, take a look at subscription television now uh, for week 15. There it is. Uh, so this is just top five in sport, yeah. yeah NRL, AFL, it's not going to be much change for the next uh, five or six months for, those, uh, for, the, for the sports program. And that's why we've split up sport now. Here's the non-sport uh, ones, and there they are. Selling yeah. Houses Australia, always in there. Flavor, what's happening uh, elsewhere <laughs> on the, the platform. But yeah, Lifestyle 3, the top five there. Wentworth uh, doing very well for Soho too. Now, Game of Thrones as well, still doing well for Foxtel, right? Yeah, look, that uh, Series 5 yeah. episode debuted this week all around the world. It was a massive, I forget how many countries, 100 more countries yeah. showed it uh, uh, simulcast at the same time. Uh, the ratings came out, look, the biggest ever audiences in Australia, the UK, the US. Interesting, HBO in the US doesn't like the overnight uh, mm. rankings, though, so they, they don't put out overnight ratings. They wait till they get in all the, what they call the consolidated people who watch it back uh, over a three or four week period. So we'll get even a better idea how that first episode I'd done in a few weeks' time, so particularly the, in the US. All this talk of people ripping off um, Game of Thrones shows, it still did well live. Yeah, look, it's, you know, it probably doesn't help, but it also gave it a massive uh, publicity inject just yeah. hours before it screened. Yeah, exactly. You know, so. Now, Joanna yeah. Lumley, starring in a new uh, marketing campaign for Foxtel, when did she come out to film that she one? She didn't come out here, Ingrid. Really? They sent a team over to England. Really? Just like the Ricky Gervais spots right, for Optus and their Netflix association. They sent a team over to film to the spot in the UK. I think she's been promoting the Foxtel drama that we've talked about, all the premium drama that's showing this month and over the next couple of months. And she's also done a spot for the box sets offering. Right, there you have it. Yeah. Sending a team over. Um, now, 10 as well con has confirmed The Biggest Loser will be back. Different name, different host. Yeah, look, uh, I think TBL Families it's going to be called. Fiona Faulkner has taken so over. Is it the same show? I think so, yeah. OK. So, but it's going to be Families this time. Right. Okay? And TBL, so it's a The Biggest Loser right, abbreviated. Okay. Just gives it a bit of a, uh, a different flavour. Hashtag, good for social media. Absolutely. <laughs> New host. Um, so just freshen it up a bit. It's, uh, it's still performed, well, it has been performing well for 10. Not as great as it used to in the early days, but I think this, this could get it back uh, up to some of its glory days, perhaps. Now, in terms of um, Anzac Day, it's obviously coming up. There's been a bit of backlash um, from the public about firms exploiting it. How's this played out in the media space? Yeah, we've all heard about this Woolworths promotion that went wrong and they yeah. pulled it off air pretty quickly and, and, and stopped promoting it. Um, but there's, there's been other people. There's, there's a Camp Gallipoli promotion, which seemed a little bit mm. weird to me when I first heard about it. You can go out and recreate the experience of being out under the stars. and mm. it just had the wrong... They actually cancelled the one in New Zealand so they didn't sell many tickets. don't think it's been performing that well here. There's a whole lot of Target uh, merchandise associated with that. You go and buy a swag and uh, I think even mugs and a T-shirt with the... It just seems a little bit wrong to me, doesn't it? So I think firms are going to have to be really careful and media companies associated with those merchandising activities are being associated with it. Let's tre tread carefully in the next uh, couple of weeks. Sure. All right, James, that does unfortunately uh, wrap up Media Week for this week. Thanks so much to our guest host or co-host, editor and publisher of Media Week, James Manning. From the team here, thanks for your company.